So from the top, it's literally just this this Moog thing and this little clap. Oh, now if I slate the clap, someone's going to sample it. This video is sponsored by GPU Audio. Stick around to the end to get your hands on a free supercharged GPU Audio plug-in suite. Because the lyric in Demon Time is, is quite raunchy too. But we'll <laughs> get on to that maybe as you explain more about the music, about how the, the song evolved after finding that beat. Yeah, I mean, mainly that loop was the kind of inspiration. And then I think basically what I did after that was just add the clap on the on the two and four. And it sort of just already sounds like a, a beat. And then it was just about sort of doing things for structure and adding in the kicks, which have this very like Ferrelli kind of quality to them. Just try and solo all the percussion here. Take the leap out. And there's like different kick sounds going on, and like, yeah, you can just hear me having fun messing around as I'm making it. Beyond that, there's like very few other sounds going on. I mean, there's a couple of fun things at the end, like trying to imitate like um, the kind of fader riding of like a, a DJ uh, using like tremolo and stuff. So I had this like Hoover sound, not a vacuum cleaner Hoover, like a Hoover like the synth. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of like modulating uh, a tremolo to make it sound like there's a sort of DJ like, you know, scratching it up and stuff. Yeah. And then doing the same thing with this uh, very hilarious sound of kids cheering. Which is just like kind of <laughs> library stock sound. Right. It's not like you went down the road and... No, I mean, that would have been much cooler. But trying to make it sound like it's being scratched up a bit. And how are you recreating that scratching effect then? Well, it's like uh, on this particular thing I'm using... Some people spent spent 20 years of, of their life trying to learn how to do that really well. well. This is kind of like the fake version of that. Like I actually did try and record it on my CDJs, but I just couldn't get it tight enough and it just seemed like I could get a better result by faking it, to be honest. <laughs> I think that's okay in the spirit of like having fun and not, oh, totally. not worrying too much about it. But I'm using this um, Good Hertz, it's called Trim Control. It's just like a tremolator thing i use a lot of good hertz plugins i probably talked about that last time we were maybe in conversation yeah um yeah i, I just want to hear a bit more of that i, I really like it oh yeah sure yeah, let's sorry do, let's it's a personal that. thing <laughs> as promised i'm here to tell you more about our friends over at gpu audio who are teaming up with the likes of amd nvidia and apple to unlock your graphics cards full potential and give you lightning fast audio with real-time results. They are working hard behind the scenes to bring GPU processing to third-party developers too. Follow the link in the description to download their free modulation plugin bundle featuring a chorus, phaser and flanger or go to gpu.audio forward slash take notes. Thanks to GPU Audio for supporting the show. Evolving the tracks for the record, um, one track at a time is it or are you kind of working on lots of different pieces that are going to end up making the album and then when do you decide who to turn to for vocals if you want vocals on it because you've got a, a really wide array of different people collaborating here that's always like the most interesting question i get asked is like how do you pick people like there's so many people and i never really know the answer what i normally say is like i really like what they do which sounds really banal to say out loud it's a good um, reason though but i listen to a lot of music and there's mm. only a few things that i really latch on to so that's one reason I'll reach out. Another reason is like I have them in mind when I'm making the song. But mostly it just emerges out of sort of gut feeling, I guess. It's like that would sound really good. Or for example, like putting Little Uzi Vert on the Baby Cake song. It was kind of a logical progression of like, okay, we've got a flip of Baby Cakes with Shy Girl and Pink Panthers. And it's like, what's the leftist thing that we can do? where that is being juxtaposed with something completely odd, like a extremely punky American rapper who probably hasn't heard Baby Cakes or is unaware of kind of the, the cult following around it. 
So yeah, sometimes it's like a sort of logical train of thought. Other times it's just like really want to make something with them. But in this case, I I had Bailey in mind the whole time, and she's super talented, as you can yeah. hear. And it's a perfect match. It really works. Yeah. We went back and forth on it a few times and kind of like changed some lyrics. And actually, I've got something quite funny to play, which is my uh, ref that I sent to her because I we didn't have a hook and I sort of was having a cigarette one day. And I was like, because the album was already called Demon Time at this point. And uh, I just kind of came up with that hook and sort of whispered it into my phone and then went and recorded a version to send to her. I can play a bit of that. It's quite funny. because I'm trying to like sound like I'm from New York a little bit. Yeah, here it is. Go, 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 no, we hadn't met. Yeah, I I think I just DM'd her on uh, Twitter. This was mm. like, hello, I really like you. I made this. I thought you'd like it. Um, hope you're well, you know. like Yeah. And she did really like it, and she wrote something incredible over it. And from there, we got to know each other, obviously, and we yeah. hung out since then. And and But you'd given her that kind of vocal reference, I guess. So she had... That actually came much later. Oh, that, okay. I'd right. just given her the beat, like, just cold to see what she would do and then based on what she did I wrote a hook for her and yeah there was a bit of trading but that's another thing I really enjoyed doing on this album is like getting much more involved as a writer yeah I guess what I'm really trying to do on this album is just be a bit more curatorial and kind of like in control of the vibe as a whole and kind of like leading people down a trail and getting the best out of them yeah 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 kind of creating the vibe um, first rather than kind of waiting to see what, what comes up because some of those collaborations say for yeah. RYC with that joint thing in the room creating an atmosphere that mm. was conducive to creativity and then mm -hmm. seeing what resulted and then working out what you wanted to do with that whereas this is having a, a more overseer type approach to things I suppose yeah I basically just got obsessed with Warhol I was like <laughs> reading every book that's ever been written about Warhol and I was like, it's so interesting that obviously as an artist, he was very prolific and kind of a genius. But the thing that I find really interesting is the whole factory element and like inviting weird New York art people to just hang out and see what happens and like kind of being the weird background figure that connects all these bands and photographers and artists and stuff. Not that I'm anything like that, but that idea of like being a bit more curatorial really got under my skin during this, and I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> I must say that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good. It's good. It's good. You wanted some fun. That's what you yeah. decided that what you should be seeking, and and it's great that, to know that you did find that fun. Anything else that we should hear from Demon Time before we move on? There's a couple more things that I made on the um, D Fam, just little percussion loops. I mean, if you want, we could build up through the track and you could highlight things. So from the top, it's literally just this this Moog thing and this little clap. Oh, now if I isolate the clap, someone's going to sample it. <laughs> That's the kind of thing I'm cognizant of. Yeah, and then here there's a couple of these kind of build up sounds that are all... Uh, Defam stuff. I mean, it really is deceptively simple, this track. There's a couple of these kind of funny, bubbly, like, that's quite Y2K evocative in my mind. Like, all these kind of crazy little uh, effects stabs, I guess. And uh, they things you've created purposely or, or yeah it's like a combination of things that i would have made myself or like this this evil laugh that kind of appears all over demon time that's kind of a stock famous stock sound which i thought was quite funny yeah and th that's basically it i think i've gone through every single element of the track at that point yeah so that's a classic muramasa track where it's like you listen to it and then you look at the project and you're like actually there's only like five or six things going on maybe only four at a time at any given time, yeah. Simple but effective. What more do you want? 
Well, part of that sound of demon time that I was talking about is like kind of dry, close, minimalistic, like doing a lot with as little as possible. And it was really fun to kind of explore that. Whereas the last album was quite maximalist in places and kind of intense. (laughs) 